we online? Good. Right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this meeting of the Executive. My name is Councillor Paul Follows, Leader of the Council and Chair of the Executive. This meeting is being held in the Council Chamber at the Berries in Godalming and is being webcast live. Um, we have a couple of items that will be withdrawn from the agenda, but I'll get to those when we get to them. And a supplement with revised recommendations for items 10 and 11 was published yesterday. Item one is apologies. Ben, can I have a, any advice on apologies? Uh, thank you, Leader. You have apologies this evening from councillors Murrilees and Williams. Thank you very much. Uh, item two, minutes of the meeting on the 5th of March, published on the website. Do you have your consent to agree the minutes? The enthusiasm is palpable in the meeting. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate that. Item three, declarations. Any, any members with any de uh, declarations of interest on any matters? Nope. Question, uh, item four, questions from the public, Ben? There are none. And item five, questions from members. Um, Terry, Councillor Weldon, my apologies. I think you've got official questions. Um, with your consent, I'm going to put that as part of the fairground slash way down road items. Are you, are you happy with that? Absolutely happy, of course. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Um, Item six, um, leader and portfolio holders updates. I'm going to go, um, I will say a few more things at the end as well, but I will just say thank you to Nick Palmer, who's departed the executive as of a few weeks previous. Um, he's one of the original members of the original 2019 executive. There aren't that many of us left now. In fact, I think there is only myself and Mark um, of the original 2019 crew, which is a little bit strange in its own right. No, and Steve Williams, of course, who's not with us tonight, but um, only the three of us of the original 10 left. But uh, Nick was the first member of the Labour Party to join the executive um, and form the cross-party alliance that has so far endured to this day. Um, and I'm very, very pleased to welcome um, Councillor Janet Crow, who's joined the executive in the same portfolio. Um, obviously, give you a moment to update and introduce in a moment when we go round. Um, Janet's a councillor in Godalming as well, Farncombe Catch Award, um, and it comes with a, a great deal of experience, and I'm sure will add greatly to the perfection of the 10. Right, so I shall now go round uh, the group, starting with Councillor Tony Fairclough. Uh, thank you, Leader. Uh, I would just like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and indeed apologise for the issues relating to Waverley car parks over the last couple of days. This was due to um, a software update relating, to, obviously, to the changes in prices uh, for the first time in three years, and technology didn't quite live up to our expectations, uh, and as I said, I would apologise to any of our residents that were inconvenienced by it. Please rest assured that the issues have, in the main, been addressed. Uh, we have certain machines that are so old that the automatic updates just will not take, and therefore we are going to have to update them by hand, manually, and all of this should be completed by the end of the week. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Councillor Janet Crowe. Any updates that you'd like to make or introductions even on your first time here? Um, no, <laughs> no updates. Um, I've got nothing to update as it's my first meeting. Um, but thank you very much for inviting me onto the executive. I'm very pleased to be here. Hope I can make a decent contribution going forward. I have no doubt about that, Janet. So thank you. Councillor Keel. Thank you, Leader. I would um, like to echo your thanks to um, Councillor Palmer for his service on the executive and to welcome um, Councillor Crow to her position. Um, I don't have any particular updates this time, but I would just like to acknowledge the excellent spring fair that Godalming Town Council put on over the weekend. Um, it was great to see so many people coming into our town and spending time in our lovely, beautiful high street. So thank you. Very much seconded. Thank you very much for that, Victoria. Councillor Mark Merriweather. Uh, thank you, Leader. Um, nothing specific from me other than to um, uh, echo your farewells to uh, Nick and uh, welcome to uh, Janet. Thank you, Mark. Councillor Murray is his way. Councillor George Murray. Uh, thank you, Leader. Nothing to update uh, for my portfolio. Uh, just to, I'll sort of say welcome to uh, Janet Crow. I'm sure she'll do a great job. Thanks ever so much. Thank you, George. Councillor Paul Rivers. I was going to say nothing special, but of course, 
there is something very special on my left hand side <laughs> here. Um, and I'm, I'm digging the ribs. <laughs> oh, they're just to remind me what's going on. Um, so, uh, excellent. Uh, Nick did a great job and uh, he kept the draft back very well uh, when he was sitting next to me. Uh, Janet obviously can't do the same, but she'll do an excellent job, I'm sure. We're looking forward to introducing her to the whole of Waverley building work with Wellington boots and all sorts of things. It's going to be fun. And I'm sure in true Labour fashion, always slightly to your left, Paul. Um, and Councillor Townsend. Thank you, Lita. I'd just like to echo everyone's um, welcome to Janet. I know she'll be a great asset to the executive and look very much forward to working with her. Um, as I'll be introducing the economic development strategy later, I will reserve my comments until then. Thank you. And thank you. And just also to add to Councillor Keel's point, um, the footfall at Godalming Town, uh, Town Centre was se over 17,000 people, which was 80% more than the footfall in the preceding week. So um, the counters that Waverley installed and are now being maintained by our towns and parishes allow us to, um, to make some of the statements that I know that Councillor Townsend will be referring to for sure in her introduction to the economic development strategy. Right, I shall be moving then into... Uh, item seven, which starts with a fairly long list of recommendations and comments from the overview and scrutiny committees. Um, I'm going to try and go through these relatively methodically and I'll bring in other members um, where there's a need to. Item 12.1, so I'm just for, for Ben's sake, I'm going to refer to the last two, uh, the, the last two digits effectively of each reference for convenience. So 12.1, the Waverley LC WIP adoption. I have to say I was a little surprised to see this recommendation and particularly the source of that recommendation, particularly being the chair talking about lack of consultation. Um, there have been, I think, two rounds of member briefings within this council. There's been several rounds at Surrey County Council. Most towns and parishes, and bearing in mind the chairman of the ONS is a member of Godalming Town Council, so he has sat across from me in another two briefings at Godalming Town Council. Um, it surprises me that there was a request for further consultation um, in that ONS. This is also um, a document that Surrey itself has consulted on with the public very, very widely. Um, for those who aren't familiar with the LC WIP, that's the Local Cycling Walking Infrastructure Plan. Um, although it is a document where Waverley is a primary stakeholder in that, these are all assets that are to be delivered or at least potentially be delivered by the county. Um, so really this is a, a county document that we have had some input into as the local planning authority and as a local stakeholder. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what additional consultation is appropriate for us to even propose. Um, and from my perspective, I think I've sat through at least six hours, not counting the time I've spent looking at it as an executive member. So um, I'm not proposing any further consultation and I'm not going to be proposing any further to Surrey unless anybody here thinks that we need to do some more. Um, there was a particular comment in there also that only referred to Farnham, um, and we're talking about the Waverley LC whip, and we're in the slightly convoluted situation that there is a Farnham LC whip and a rest of Waverley LC whip. Um, there were some changes to ensure that the connections between the two um, made sense. There, that, that did have a limited consultation as well, I recall, and there was briefings on that matter too. Um, so I'm, I'm just, just checking in with the Farnham councillors in particular that there were no special reasons that the Farnham part of that LC whip needed additional consultation. So George and then Mike. Um, thank you, Leader. If I follow it correctly, when I was listening to the ONS meeting, the main problem with the Farnham WIP, which is part of the FIP development, which is integral to that. Um, the issues were there was a big consultation. There was some agreed routes, walking routes, and there were some uh, cycling routes. But in this Waverley LC WIP, there were new ones added in and they weren't consulted on. So that was what the members of the ONS meeting were saying, that these new ones for the Farnham, they, what, they weren't talking about the Waverley one as such, but the Farnham one, there was new routes added into that which weren't consulted on, and that's what they were saying. That's what I believe. So my understanding is that the Farnham bit is still a separate document, and effectively, whatever the Farnham LC whip that says, both practically, and I'd probably go as far as to say, in all reasonable respects, the, 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 the FIP document effectively trumps anything that anything else says on this subject. Mark? 
Thank you, Leader. Yeah, I, I, I agree with George. I recognise that. I was there at the discussion. I, I was slightly confused because the um, final infrastructure programme has gone through even more consultation than the, uh, than the Waverley uh, LC WIP. Uh, but I do uh, 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 recognise that there was um, uh, that there are moving parts, and that, that the attempt here was to align, the, or the, the the attempt in in our document was to align um, as as at least one attempt at joined up government to align our, our Waverley LC whip with what was being proposed at Farnham, um, and I've got no idea with what the whether the Farnham infrastructure program. Uh, the Farnham LC whip will end up looking like anyway, but um, it was it was a bona fide attempt. Um, there's there's no way anyone's going to start work on anything un with, unless there's any uh, satisfactory uh, consultation. So I'm I'm a little bit with you. Um, it it seems to be a, um, an unnecessary and, and slightly frustrating detour that the whole Waverley LC whip uh, is being um, held up uh, for um, what is a moving target in Farnham. So, I mean, just for anybody who was not familiar with the fact that this is actually rejoining up something that was artificially broken up. I mean, LC whips are not normally broken up within a borough in this way. And it was only because of the Farnham infrastructure plan that that was the case. Um, and when the two plans were put together, there were genuinely elements where there was a cycle route, for example, going through Milford, Whitley and into Elstead, which then hit nothing when it hit the Farnham side and a few coming back the other way through what we now call the Western Commons Ward. So um, I, from my, unless, unless there's a, an alternative recommendation, I am not proposing additional consultation because the elements of the FIP, I think, more than cover the ambiguities on the Farnham side. Mark. Sorry, Leader, uh, uh, you, you've reminded me of what I, what I wanted to actually say is that Waverley can consult as much as it likes. Um, on on the things that con were concerned here, which is the Farnham LC whip, and it is the Farnham infrastructure plan that is actually the uh, project that is actually going to deliver the Farnham LC whip. I, I think that the hierarchy of the documents in Farnham is clear, which is why I'm also not, I don't think it's appropriate to push for additional consultation on that side or delay the rest of Waverley's LC whip any further. Okay, moving then on to the one I ending 7.1, which is staffing turnover concerns. And I will, of course, invite the portfolio holders who cover complaints and housing repairs to comment in a moment if they wish to. Um, but staff turnover is a matter that clearly impacts all departments. And something I need to stress is that there is an onus on all members to engage in a constructive manner with our officers. Um, an area that continues to cause me some concern is that deliberate misrepresentation of a number of critical details, particularly on matters such as the collaboration and cost sharing, are causing concerns among officers artificially, um, and these things are damaging morale, and those things have consequences. So my, my request to all members, and I'll be putting this in, a, in an email, I suspect, to all councillors at some point in the next week or so, is just to remind everybody that everybody has a role to play in ensuring that staff morale is good, and that the facts are communicated at all times and that officers are treated with due respect. Um, I'm also not actually seeing anything in the recommendation in terms of an actual action. Um, the words in there say undefined, well, it says urgent action without any definition of what that actually means. Um, so at the very least, um, Ben, I'd like to record back that an undefined action from ONS is not particularly constructive. And if they would like to propose what urgent action is required, they are more than welcome to do so. Um, but in terms of the specifics, um, George, Paul, did you want to mention, did you want to say anything about complaints or, or how housing repairs in any, in any of this at the moment? Paul? Oh, happy, happy to, Leader. I, I think uh, the, the ONS uh, has identified something that we've known for quite some time, certainly on the quarterly reports, that which, which are usually percentages that show that there are uh, specific problems, uh, in particular with responsive repairs uh, under the aegis of Ian Williams. Um, it's been a uh, an issue that the Landlord Services Advisory Board has picked up on a number of occasions. And as a councillor, I'm sure this applies to all councillors here, we have individually and sometimes collectively uh, been, uh, had identified to us problems that are surprisingly long term. One or two, perhaps. I mean, I can think of uh, four that I've had over, over the past five years. Um, 
I, I think I think it's only talking to clients on the uh, uh, clients uh, tenants on the uh, well, there are clients as well tenants on the uh, LSAB over the last couple of months that we've been to to realise the breadth and depth of this. Um, so, uh, following your advice uh, of setting up a, a small executive working group, uh, we have done this really within the LSAB. Um, so, the head of the tenants panel. Uh, uh, Terry and my new colleague here um, uh, form this group. We've had a number of uh, preliminary meetings with Amy Walton and uh, one or two others to to look at the data that we we need to to assess in more detail at uh, a deeper level with the LSAB on a monthly basis rather than a quarterly uh, basis. Um, one of the things that really surprised me and in relation perhaps to the number of uh, problems that have come my way is that uh, uh, Ian Williams complete something like over 900 um, reactive repairs every month. So when we hear of maybe five or ten that are going wrong out of 900 or so <coughs> that's that puts into context. We see many reports that are in percentage terms and that hides the underlying magnitude. I mean, Waverley, surprisingly, is a big borough, and we have 4,800 um, houses. So uh, not, not to uh, ignore the fact that there are some serious issues. I mean, when it goes wrong, it goes really wrong. So uh, we are, uh, uh, with Amy Walton's help, pulling together some additional uh, information that we will review through our uh, own meetings. We, we will meet formally in the middle of this month and again in May, and, and that report will come out of that. But we're looking really uh, for, and here are a number of things, a number of jobs in progress, not the percentage of changes, um, number of jobs that are overdue, uh, the number of jobs that uh, in Ian Williams that are subcontracted, because we've seen some specific problems coming through there. And these are the figures that we will address with Ian Williams uh, uh, on a much more frequent level. Um, we, uh, Janet and I, have been looking at the way tenants report repairs as well. We spent some time with our customer services, listening to calls coming in, and, and made some points on that. Uh, voids are an issue that we want to deal with. Uh, the length uh, uh, that, that a house is in void, uh, and also a breakdown of the work that happens during a void the initial assessment, the length of time it takes to, uh, to understand how much work should be done to bring it back up to a standard, and then how much time it takes to do that. And we've seen, for instance, our void re responses being um, slower than, than normal. Um, complaints, of course, is an issue, but they are relatively small in numbers compared to the work that's going on. The essential thing, I think, is to look at the detail, collect the detail, look at the detail, and uh, understand the process from everybody's point of view, whether it's Ian Williams or ourselves. Communication, I think, at the end of the day, communication between our applications, our, our systems, is not as great as it might be. Uh, we'll be able to spend large amounts of money in improving that, no doubt. Um, but th th those are the things that we want to do. So short term, uh, will be a report uh, May, May, June time from the three of us, uh, a, re um, a job by the LSAB to look more frequently and to raise up problems on a more frequent level. And hopefully we will see an improvement. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Paul. And just something also just feedback to ONS. Um, one of the concerns I have is that they're, they're input is on lines of the is on basically bits of the forward plan effectively what's coming up on our agenda rather than looking at any thematic topics such as for example housing repairs maintenance and things like that there are there are a few themes that they might have more use in picking up rather than looking at what specifically our agenda items are because effectively they're just looking at the same thing as us again but from a position in most cases of less information which is not helpful to anybody there is a reason why there has been a proliferation of executive working groups because my understanding would be normally be that ONS would have working groups to look at particular items, particular themes that would report back to the main group 
and then look at those to make recommendations based in evidence. What effectively we're seeing is ONS just looking at the same agenda as us with a displacement in time. And it doesn't really add a great deal to, and it's a, not a good use of their time either. So um, perhaps that's a, a more open discussion we can have about how ONS works. Um, in terms of um, the information that the LSAB has been looking at, thank you for that, Paul. And I think we need to package a version of that up for all members so that they can get a, a sort of status report on, on where housing maintenance and repairs are. So if they get questions in their areas, they can respond accordingly. Okay, moving then on to the comments from the first ONS. Um, we've got 9.1 and 10.1, which relates to Fairground and Way Down Road, which, of course, we're going to be dealing with later anyway, so I'll, I'll park those for now. 13.1, I welcome that the ONS committee welcomed the greater clarity in the report provides on decarbonisation. Um, I'll come back to the status of these comments in a moment because I'm, I'm not entirely sure what comments have in terms of weight compared to recommendations. Um, we'll then go to ending 7.1 from the services overview and scrutiny so here we're looking at the safer waverley partnership um, i'm sure kika would agree with me and I, I know janet has some experience in this domain um professionally the safer waverley partnership um with councillors and the public i think getting um promoting that work happy to agree with that and i'll speak to comms about how we can promote that further uh, number two that the executive endorse and help facilitate a training and awareness course for members on the subject that the safer waverley partnership and public space protection orders with the presence of police and colleagues if possible. Um, I'm happy to ask for that. Um, there is a wider issue, I think, about PSPOs, which we'll probably get to at the end of this, particularly in regards to police capacity to enforce them. Um, and finally, that the executive assistant assuring that the community services officers working on the Save for Waverley partnership are fully resourced. Um, I will need to ask for clarity by what they mean by that. As far as I'm concerned, they're, they're resourced to do the job for which they're employed. Um, has there been feedback from officers that they don't have things that they need? Um, I think we just need to get that clarified because I'm not sure what they're referring to in that in that last one. Any other comments on the Safe Waverley Partnership recommendation? Okay, then moving on to um, the one ending well, S26-3-2024, so it's a slightly different um, construction of the reference. Uh, this is regarding the performance reports. So support the upcoming key performance indicator review, which is obviously something that's going to be happening um, to, to improve that document as a whole, um, with attention particularly given to puti uh, punitively difficult items such as E3A um, and E3B. So we're obviously going to be looking at those along with all the others. And the second one, and I imagine Liz might want to comment on this one, to take any appropriate measures to ensure that the planning department is adequately resourced and so capable of giving the borough optimum service. Liz. <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure what they mean by that. I mean, uh, the um, we are out to, we have a recruitment campaign at the moment and, you know, we, we are trying to fill those posts. Um, as everybody knows, across the whole of the country, there has been a, a crisis in recruitment across planning. Even PINs has had problems getting uh, planning inspectors. And actually, I think they went on strike last year. <laughs> um, so um, I don't think it's, it's a, a problem just for Waverley. Um, we do have a, a, a full uh, complement of planning officers at the moment. We do have a lot of contractors, but we're hoping to, to change that. Um, and um, I can assure you it's receiving full attention in order to achieve that. Thank you, Liz. So just some to a couple of concluding comments. Um, I don't recognise comments and statements like that to have any formal recognition. Most of them have not gone through a vote. They are the statements of individual members in some cases. They're not resolutions of the committee. So I, I'm not entirely sure why they're on these papers in this way. And I don't think we should be giving them that weight. Sorry, Liz. Yep. Um, I, I would just make a, an overall comment. I mean, obviously, we want this document to be meaningful and want to be able to take actions based on recommendations of the committee. Um, if I want to read through the minutes, I can do, and usually I either attend ONS or I watch it uh, online, so I'm aware of the general conversation. I, I'm not really seeing the value in having that repeated here unless it is a recommendation which we can actually act on. In, from my point of view, unless I am sure that that has been through a vote and therefore has the support of the committee, it is very difficult to sit here and adjudicate individual comments. So I'm hoping we don't have those again. Um, for those of you who've only been on the executive for a little while, what we used to have before they stopped coming 
was a standing invite every quarter for the chairman and vice chairman of each of the ONSs to attend EB, the executive briefing session we have on Tuesdays, so that we could discuss um, the context of their recommendations. If we have things we didn't understand that they could clarify, and it allowed us to actually explain these. They stopped coming, so we stopped having those meetings. Now, I'm going to say right now, and hopefully it can be recorded for the minutes, that I, again, formally ask the chairs and vice chairs, if they can't come to our exec brief meetings, that they come to these meetings, either remotely or in person, to, to stand by their committee's recommendations and take questions on them in exactly the same way that they should engage with us in their sessions. I have a vastly different experience at one ONS to the other. I have one where, I'm, where I, I get the ability often to speak on, on occasion and one where I am often prevented from speaking or answering a question of a member, even if I'm the one in the room that knows the answer. Um, it's a waste of everybody's time. So I'm, I'm pushing again one last time for a more constructive engagement with the ONS chairs, and I hope they will take me up on that offer. Liz. Can I just also endorse your support of the working parties for ONS because they were extremely valuable. They were very targeted, very specific. I mean, you know, as we did the Pride or Prejudice one, you know, looking at at our, our housing stock, you know, it, it, it is really real value if they look at very specific issues and report back. Um, so I would also um, request that they um, say why that why that perhaps they're not doing that or don't see the value in doing that at the moment. Thank you. It's one of the things that's always been taken up very well cross party is that when people have spent the time investigating a particular subject in depth and have gone out to get the evidence and report back on that with the support of officers, it has always been looked upon favourably. And, and it's an area where non-exec members can get involved in a very specific area and come back with really meaningful and constructive suggestions. And it's and it's just not been happening now for several years. And that is why we now have so many exec working groups, because the exec has felt that there aren't that these, that these things aren't being covered by ONS. Right. At that note, I will then move then to item eight. Um, we are in a pre-election period at the moment. And on the advice of the monitoring officer, we've withdrawn item eight till the next meeting of the executive Item nine, the new economic development strategy and action plan. Councillor Townsend, I believe you'll be introducing this one. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Um, firstly, I would like to thank the economic development team for all their hard work in getting to this point. Um, and we can now go forward to the formal process of adoption of our new economic development strategy, which is supported, as you can see in your papers, by a comprehensive action plan outlining our short, medium and long term measures to, to achieve this ambitious plan. I would also like to thank the team at Avison Young in helping to assemble the aspirations of this executive into a coherent document and Martin Ebbs also from Economic Growth Management for his work on the evidence-based data. As you will be aware, our existing economic development strategy is now very much out of date and in the main, no longer relevant. We have had the shocks of COVID, Brexit and the cost of living crisis, all of which have impacted our local economy. This council has also declared a climate emergency and we take that declaration very seriously. We recognise that we need to do things differently for our residents, our businesses and for future generations. We want our economy to thrive and we need it to work within social and ecolo ecological sorry, thresholds. This approach seeks to create a flourishing, sustainable and just economy and is based on the idea that the economy should not be measured on GDP alone, but also on its ability to meet the needs of all people while staying with the within the ecological boundaries of our single planet. This strategy has high ambitions, and that's because we know that businesses as you, uh, business as usual is not an option. Many residents and businesses that we speak to want change and recognise the need to be more sensitive to their impact on the world around them whilst building profitable businesses. This document sets out our 10-year plan to move towards adopting and achieving this ambition. Our vision is to concentrate on the lifeblood of our local economy, which is small, micro and startup businesses. And these make up about 95% of our local economy. We recognise the challenges that these businesses face and we intend to use our resources to help them to flourish. Waverley has an educated and entrepreneurial workforce based around our four main settlements of Farnham, Godalming, Hazelmere and Cranley. 
when we assessed the health of our main high streets last month, all had vacancy rates well below the national average, which is a very good sign. We have already supported and provided funding for business improvement districts in Farnham, Godamy and Cranley, and have a calendar of regular meetings with them, as well as with our more established chambers of commerce. We also have the perhaps slightly less visible, but equally important rural economy covering a broad range of sectors and are joining forces with Guildford's established rural forum to work more closely with these businesses going forward. As you will see, our strategy is based around our six Thrive themes outlined in full within the strategy. These are based on some of the work we are already doing around our small business support, growing a green economy, supporting our high streets and improving our commercial space offer, as well as enhancing our infrastructure. We will be working closely across all council services, including with the local plan team to help to deliver these themes and have set clear targets to measure our success. Within each of our Thrive themes are our more targeted game changer programmes, which promote Waverley as a place and based on our identified strengths of green, digitally connected, creative and regenerated rural economy. We are already working with UCA in Farnham and I recently attended the launch of their trailblazing um, new <coughs> regional initiative, which is Pixel Rise. And this aims at creating a thriving ecosystem in gaming and becoming a beacon for creativity, innovation and inclusivity. I'm also delighted that Professor Sophie Smith of UCA, who is the Director of School of Games and Creative Technology, will be joining us for the Guildford and Waverley Business Question Time event on Monday, June the 3rd at 5pm. Hopefully I will see some other of the executive members there too. You need to book it via Eventbrite. <laughs> the event will be hosted and chaired by Professor Amelia Hadfield, who is the Associate Vice President at the University of Surrey. We recognise that we are delivering a new vision and a step change for our local economy based on Kate Raworth's Donut Economics. This approach to delivering sustainable economic development needs to be embedded across our council services, working together at all levels as one council to achieve this and also building strong connections with our stakeholder groups and partners who are also critical to the successful delivery of this strategy. I'm very proud to be able to present this to the executive as well as the action plan and I very much hope for their approval. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. And before I bring in other speakers, I just want to say thank you both to you and to the team that's got this document sorted out. Um, Steve Williams and I, I think, sat in 2017 and were in a lecture with Kate Rayworth um, on the subject of donut economics. And to finally see it at the front and centre of a proper economic development strategy is incredibly positive. Um, it recognises the... It is bold, but I think, you know, better to be bold than be stumped, frankly, with our with our economy over here. We need to do something. We need to recognise the, the, the differences in our towns and, and parishes, but at the same time also, you know, think about a wider Waverley interaction in that level and that sphere. Um, George, I think you wanted to speak second. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Liz. Um, so firstly, I would like to commend Catherine Knight and her team for the detailed work she's put into this report and her dedication to ensure that businesses in Waverley gets the intention it needs. As a small business owner and as a Farnham bid representative, I've seen firsthand how hard she works in helping businesses and aiding communication with Waverley. As a Farnham representative, I read with interest the section called Creative Waverley which focuses on Farnham becoming a creative centre for Waverley itself. By working with partners such as UCA, the Maltings, New Ashgate Gallery and Farnham Town Council to encourage our world-class artists and craft professionals to use underused public and retail spaces. I've seen firsthand where craft pop-up shops have created a real buzz and brought spaces, uh, spaces back to life in our town centres. I applaud the aspiration to create an additional thousand jobs over the next five years and the increase of 2000 extra businesses over 10 years. But I also note with caution, 45.5% of businesses in Waverley fail within the first five years. 
And as a local business owner, I know the pressure on running a small business. And it's not just whether a business is popular, but whether you can make it profitable enough, enough to survive and expand. The one thing I would highlight is the lack of affordable accommodation. Especially in Farnham, but across the borough, housing is 16.5 times higher than average earnings in your report, more than any neighbour in borough. The greatest threat to business growth I see is where are employees going to live? So this needs to be at the forefront of Waverley's decision making over the next five to 10 years if this action plan is to succeed. And I would be delighted to second this recommendation and thank Liz for the work she's done in it. Well done. It's interesting how some of these things all link back to everything else. I mean, the fact that there aren't places there aren't as many places to live and the affordable affordability index is so high it probably has something to do with the fact that there's five and a half thousand outstanding unbuilt permissions within Waverley that contributes to other problems, um, particularly the affordability of housing. Um, and that's before we get to the type of housing that is often built by those developers when they get around to building it. Um, any other comments? I will just ask everybody also to focus on part one of the recommendation, which is to consider the comments of overview and scrutiny. And I will state that they are comments rather than recommendations. Um, which are on the um, penultimate page. I've got Councillor Keel and then Councillor Merriweather. Thank you, Leader. Many congratulations to all the officers who worked on this and to Councillor Townsend on this excellent document and the extensive research and analysis that has gone into its preparation. It is rightly an ambitious vision for our borough and builds on the work that's already being ably done in this field. I'd like to particularly welcome the emphasis on climate change and that this strategy is aiming to promote a green local economy across our borough. I also really welcome the work that is proposed with parish and town councils on the place strategies and the work with the new business improvement districts and the important focus on supporting our high streets. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. Mark. Thank you, Leader. Um, I echo everything uh, from Liz, from George uh, and Victoria. The, the, um, the work here is... Um, uh, really excellent, um, and I and I think uh, regardless of the strategy, I think I'd, I'd encourage anyone to read it just to learn a little bit more about Waverley, Waverley's current economy, because I do think um, there are some misunderstandings there. If you look at the table, uh, the figure on page forty-four, um, three of our four largest employment sectors um, are ones that typically are considered low wage. We've got health, we've got education, uh, and retail. Um, the only one that might outperform that is professional, scientific and technical. So we, not, not only do we live in an area where property prices and, home, and the cost of homes are the, among the highest uh, in the country, uh, we, we live in an area where the wages that our residents have to um, uh, 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 earn uh, to pay for that prices are amongst the lowest. So I really think it's, it's important for us to... Um, uh, to, to read, learn, digest, and understand the economy of the uh, borough that we live in. Thank you. And actually, one of the starting principles of this was to make sure it was evidence-based and to, and to actually establish what the, the true, or at least a, a much better picture of the economy of Waverley actually was. And um, certainly going through this process, I learned a number of things that I had no idea were the case. A few misconceptions busted, certainly, and a few areas where we've now got evidence to justify something that we all thought was the case, which is obviously good to have as well. Um, any other speakers? All right, okay, seeing none, I'll move to the recommendations. Um, the first is to consider feedback from the Resources Overview and Scrutiny Committee on the Draft Strategy and Action Plan. Looking at their comments, I believe that we have either dealt with those in the substance of the report or they're subject to other areas such as the Carbon Reduction Action Plan or in or other areas of our corporate strategy and manifesto. I, I think we've covered them all unless anybody sees one that we haven't. Okay, and then item two, following engagement with ONS services and stakeholders to endorse the new strategy and action plan for adoption by executive prior to presentation to full council on the 23rd of April. So I can have all those in favour of its recommendation to full council. Thank you very much. And thank you, Liz. We'll now move on to items 10 and 11, which um, will obviously take sequentially, but they relate to matters which are linked um, for people on the Zoom and also in the room. I've got Councillor Rabini um, from Hay as the lead Hazelmere member 
um, at Waverley. And I've also got on the Zoom, bear with me, I'm just making sure I've got everybody that I think. I've got Councillor Terry Weldon of both Waverley and Hazelmere Town Council. I've got Councillor Claire Mathis of Hazelmere Town Council and Councillor Alistair Bayliss of Hazelmere Town Council. If there are any other Hazelmere members that are on the Zoom, please do give me a shout. If I've missed you, my apologies if I have. Um, it is within my discretion as chair to be fairly liberal in the application of the standing orders of the committee. I'm not proposing to suspend those standing orders, but I am effectively intending to treat the Hazelmere members who, have, who are present in the room and on the Zoom um, as members of the committee effectively for the, the duration of this discussion, with the exception of the vote, of course, which will have to be taken by members of the executive themselves. Um, so basically, if members of the Hazelmere contingent have any questions or comments that they would like to make following Mark's introduction, um, please do make them. It's my intent to make sure that we have as comprehensive a frequently asked questions on this subject as possible um, and that we can ensure that there is um, full engagement in terms of something like a, a commonplace portal or something. I believe the monitoring officer probably wants to tell me that I can't do something. So just to just to confirm, and I need to make sure that we do these things properly and legally by the book. Um, I'm I'm not intending to to spend standing orders, but um, if the Hazelmere members could uh, effectively ask questions, there are some there will be some issues if you're effectively taking part in the debate. But what I will do is very deliberately come back to you for follow ups where appropriate. Okay. Um, on that note, I'll ask Councillor Merriweather to introduce. <laughs> Um, thank you, Leader. Uh, the, um, so the report um, for the Fairground Development Project is on pages uh, 227 to 314 of your PACs. Um, and uh, thank you for your indulgence, um, which makes absolute sense for me to introduce this together with the next item, the Way Down Road Development Project, uh, because of the fundamental independence of them both. The Way Down Road report is on pages 315 to 360 of your packs, uh, and you'll also be aware uh, of the refinement, uh, the revision of the recommendations for these two items, which I think you have in front of you, um, which recognize uh, their connection and remove um, some duplication uh, that was actually evident in the originals. So um, while the Waverley Borough Local Plan Part 2, uh, which is Site Allocations and Development Management Policies, was adopted only just over a year ago, uh, on the 21st of March 23. It was the product of over six years, hard work, volumes of evidence, and intense consultation, debate, hearings, and official examination. Uh, LPP2 is, of course, uh, the so-called daughter document of Local Plan Part 1, which was adopted in 2018, following a similarly uh, rigorous democratic process. Uh, likewise, this Council's mandate for its corporate strategy was not only endorsed, but strengthened in the local elections less than a year ago in May 2023. The fairground is only an informal car park, but it is popular because parking is free, free of charge. Uh, and this is not a fair or sustainable use of council land, and especially so when the users are drivers from outside of the town, outside of the borough, and even outside of the county. Uh, and in contrast, the Way Down Road car park, which is paid for, uh, is um, uh, uh, completely underutilized. So it is uh, that I'm genuinely, genuinely delighted to recommend that we advance to the next stage uh, of these projects uh, that not only fulfill the commitments made in LPP2 and the corporate strategy, but will do uh, uh, in a responsible manner uh, and deliver even more besides. The fairground site uh, is allocated in LPP2 for at least 20 dwellings as part of a mixed use development and LPP2 specifies uh, that any development on this site uh, should also be designed 
to maximise place shaping opportunities in Way Hill, through improvements to the public realm, to the viability and vitality of the area, and by promoting the distinctive character of the area. Uh, it also provides that the development should retain at least existing car parking space capacity, unless it can be demonstrated that there is sufficient parking in the area or additional capacity can be provided at an alternative location within walking distance of the town centre. It goes on that the development should demonstrate uh, that it will not have a likely significant effect on protected habitat sites. And finally, it provides that the development should conserve and where possible enhance the setting of nearby heritage uh, assets. Now, I won't uh, also rehearse our corporate strategy in full, um, other than to remind us that it provides that we prioritise good quality housing for all income levels and age groups, and that our specified purpose is to promote, among other things, housing to buy and to rent uh, for those at all income levels, uh, a financially sound Waverley with infrastructure and resilient services fit for the future, and a strong, resilient local economy supporting local businesses and employment. So the two reports before you describe the considerable work that our officers have done to define viable options capable of delivering these strategic outcomes <laughs> on the fairground site and the way in which a much needed new community hub on part of the underutilized way down road car park uh, can actually enable it. The fairground report presents the case for five options that survived uh, initial assessment and recommends that we pursue a mixed use development of retail space and 32 <laughs> residential homes at Waverley Rent, which is at a mix of 70% and 65% of market rent. The recommended scheme would be self-funding. It'll pay for itself. With the retail element generating valuable revenue income for the general fund, and the residential homes operated out of, within our estate of 5,000 homes on a self-financing self basis within our ring-fenced housing revenue account. That the scheme is self-funding is significant also because it means that this scheme doesn't affect, let alone limit, our ability to buy or build council homes elsewhere. This is not an either-or choice. It's just about the quantity of homes. Rather, the choice for us is about control and quality, as well as quantity. And in this, uh, not only that, but also that the scheme would also fund that commu new community hub on the way down road. None of the other options, to the extent that they're even permitted, either in planning terms or commercially for yield investments under our current regulations, uh, none of them would be expected to perform better when, ex when assessed financially as a whole against the strategic deliverables. They included uh, the sale of the residential element of the development to a private developer on the open market, which of course would mean losing control of the development in the process. Uh, the report also describes where exactly we are in this process. We are not seeking approval to literally start digging right now. And indeed, there are no detailed plans and designs as yet. This report sets out just the agreed objectives and parameters, financial and otherwise, on which to procure a development partner and instruct independent professional experts to proceed with that design work. It's because we are contemplating this valuable and sensitive competitive com commercial procurement process, forgive me, that so much of this analysis has for now to be kept confidential in order to protect the integrity of that process. 
This is an absolute necessity to protect the interests of the council and our tax and our rent payers. Uh, the project parameters overlay financial analysis on to the LPP2 and strategic outcomes in which the scheme is anchored. Financially, we live in a highly regulated and extremely challenging environment, and we can only consider options that are viable. But we do also have to recognise that many of the deliverables, especially in the LPP2 criteria concerning on-street car parking and traffic flow, are not actually within Waverley's powers or control. And so we will be working with others, including our dear colleagues on Surrey County Council and Hazelmere Town Council, to deliver the very best that we can. There are and will be inevitably concerns, other concerns, and conflicting, if not competing, priorities to be dealt with as we progress through the design stage and then into consultation before we even get to a planning application. And it is this next stage that we are recommending now that will identify and hopefully resolve them. And can I also re-emphasize for the avoidance of doubt <coughs> that engagement and consultation uh, on top of the local plan will be a key part of the pre-planning process and that even post-planning the construction phase of the development cannot and will not commence without further approvals from this executive and the council. So uh, finally, I'd like to record my thanks to the officers uh, for all of their hard work and professionalism on this project, including over ver several very difficult years, and for bringing to us truly deliverable and sustainable options that are both uh, within the letter and the spirit of the local plan and our corporate strategy. And I'd like to commend the recommendations to this executive. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Merriweather. And yes, thank you to all the officers who've worked on this. Many of you were either in the room or on the Zoom. Um, before I open it up, I've got two registered speakers I'm going to take in order, and then I'll open it up to everybody else. That starts with Councillor John Rabini in the room. John. Thank you, Leader. Um, first of all, if I could say an echo, exactly what Mark has said, and I'd like to very much thank the officers and everybody else that's involved in this project. I've known about it for about four years, and you've done a, a, a huge amount of work, so I thank you very much for getting it to this stage. Um, you know as well as I do that the public, the community, would like to take part in this, and I'm pleased to hear from Mark that that will uh, continue and, in fact, gain momentum as we go. So first of all, there are four questions that I seem to be getting um, from the main public. First of all, perhaps I could ask, where do the display cars that will be um, displaced, where, where do they park? Because that is a question that I'm being asked again and again with limited car park spaces around that area. I'll, answer the, I'll ask these one at a time. Anybody best uh, best place to answer about car parking spaces, either on the Zoom or in the room? Mark? Yeah. Um, so the, uh, the, uh, the steer from uh, the local plan um, is very clear uh, that car parking should be considered. But until we have detailed designs, um, we uh, can't definitively say one way or the other. Uh, a lot depends on where those cars are coming from. If they are commuters who are coming in from uh, Pick a Place Horsham or Chichester um, and want to use the free car parking and take a train from Hazelmere, they may decide, for example, that they want to use a different railway station in future uh, and let the Hazelmere spaces be used by Hazel Resi Hazelmere residents. Um, that is all part of the work that we are commissioning now, uh, and I really wouldn't want to prejudice the outcome of that work uh, by um, predicting um, one way or the other. Um, other. Other than to say uh, that it will be considered, and there are uh, part of the reason that we turn to the, um, uh, the way down road site um, to um, 
uh, enable us to move the, um, uh, the Hazelmere hub was precisely because it is so underutilized. Its utilization is, you know, barely, uh, well, it's less than 30%. Um, so there, there will be some spaces still there, uh, and the rest depends on um, uh, how we will model and design the um, project itself. Abby, I've just seen you pop up on the Zoom. Is there anything you want to add to that? Thanks, Lida. Um, yeah, just to reiterate the fact that we'll be carrying out a complete um, parking assessment of the broader area, um, as, as Mark says, as part of the, the next phase. I think it's also kind of important to emphasise that any development on the fairgrounds site will need to consider what the uh, short-term parking requirements are to accommodate existing business um, use in the area. And that's certainly something that we'll be articulating through the brief when we go out to secure a development partner. Thank you, Abby. John, you had more questions. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you for reassuring me on that, because obviously, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's the local businesses that must come first. We've got to support the way here business because we don't have local car parks in that area. They are owned already by the supermarkets. So going on to my second question, thank you. Wayhill has traffic queued along its entire length. The new traffic created by the supermarket and housing will cause serious congestion. And I'd like to know how this will be mitigated. Now, obviously, as the local Surrey councillor, I would like to uh, partake in any talks you plan with Surrey County Council, because I do believe strongly that perhaps the problem at the moment is often caused by the Tesco traffic lights, which we all know slows the traffic right the way through. So this will increase, unfortunately, with what we're trying to do here. So I'd like to know any mitigation that you can think of. Thank you. First of all, I'll make that commitment that you will, of course, be involved as a Surrey member, as you should be. And, of course, Surrey should involve you too, but we will make sure that you are. Um, Mark, did you want to add anything on that one at the moment? Uh, well, the uh, only that, as I, I hopefully I made it clear, um, you know, there are some things that are outside of Waverley's control. We can do the research, um, but we will have to work with Hazelmere Town Council and with Surrey County Council. Um, if um, there's uh, evidence that um, the, uh, the traffic will cause increased congestion and uh, on-street car parking, for example, uh, the, an increase in on-street car parking. So all of these things um, uh, will be uh, taken into account uh, and we will have to um, uh, also, I think, reflect um, not only on the evidence that we have now, but the rationale uh, that was presented in the first place when this site was allocated in Local Plan Part 2. I think there's probably also a, a discussion that has to be had much further down the line, of course, about applications for SIL to remedy any of the issues that perhaps are generated by that, or indeed, as you've indicated, John, that are in fact already there and probably need some redress. You had some more questions, I think. I do, thank you. Um, number three, will the tenants of the housing be local? and retained by Waverley for local residents, because obviously we, we have a problem in Hazelmere being surrounded by green spaces. Housing to us is very, very uh, scarce, and we need to take up every opportunity we can for both social and affordable housing. And we all know that, unfortunately, um, a lot of the plans that have been coming from developers don't include affordable because they bring back these viability studies. Sorry to mention that, but please, can I have any... Um, thoughts about the local residents please just to add before i bring in mark um for the houses that will re be retained by waverley they're subject to waverley's allocation policy and that obviously puts a primacy on being a waverley resident and ideally being able to demonstrate some sort of local connection um it's not usually as specific as a hazelmere connection but i mean those things are taken properly and, and reasonably in the round um as i'm sure paul um, would would say we have a housing register that is about a thousand people more than we have properties for so we know that we know both the demand is there and we know that local demand is there for the rest of the tenure mix that's where i'm going to bring in mark liz anybody want to comment on on the rest of the tenure mix um, well, I'd like to comment actually on on uh, the broader thing. You know, part of the, the part of the whole purpose here uh, is for these to be um, Waverley homes that we own and that we control. Um, and so, um, by developing this site, uh, we keep control. Uh, we are not at the um, whims of uh, private developers um, or their viability assessments. Um, we are committing. 
uh, to um, Waverley affordable rents. As you say, that the actual allocations will have to be within um, the whatever rules and regulations we set ourselves. Um, but, it, but it is that element. I know that there will be um, uh, colleagues uh, who will argue that we should get planning permission and sell, uh, sell the site on to a private developer um, uh, and use the money to go and buy little bits of property or little properties or something all over the place in a very inefficient way, stuff that we could buy anyway. Um, but the simple fact is that um, you know, we are not a private developer. We are here for our residents. We are not here to make money. I mean, going back to the economic development strategy, it's making sure that those other types of value are maximised. I think the thing I just want to make sure that we all understand then that all of the properties that we're intending to deliver here will be retained by Waverley. Yeah, that is the case. I just want to make that very, I know I'm, I'm just repeating what I'm hoping is obvious, but I just want to be clear to everybody watching this and for the FAQs that we're going to produce that all the properties here will be retained by Waverley. Well, look, um, that, that, that is, uh, th those are the parameters or that we are setting for, um, setting for ourselves as we go out into the procurement process. Now, whether there will, whether the, um, we may go um, through some other kind of an affordable um, pathway. We may need to, I don't know, depending on how the final numbers look. But, but the absolute, the absolute uh, goal here is to have uh, at least 32 Waverley rent or affordable homes uh, delivered by us and kept under control by us um, for um, for local people, uh, supported by uh, a retail unit. So just to be clear, then that's the tenure, the, the the specific mix may be variable between sort of pure social and different types of affordable, but they're all retained and owned and managed by Waverley. Exactly. Our, our working our working model is that we know that we can do this with thirty two Waverley rent homes. I'm saying, I didn't. I don't want to labour that, but I think it's just something we need to be absolutely clear because yeah. I know it, that's something even I've been asked by residents in Hayes about um, that. So I, I just want to reinforce the point that um, the, 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 the more specific that we are at this stage, the more we lend to the perception that we are at a more advanced stage than we actually are. Um, we have uh, working assumptions that we have tested and that we've used to assess the various options that we're presented with. Um, you know, no action survives first engagement, um, but that is what we are running with. Thank you, Mark. Abby, did you want to add anything to that as I see you popped up? No, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Abby. Uh, John, any further questions? You have yes, thank you. Uh, just before I ask the question, thank you very much for those uh, answers. It gives me a lot more confidence in... Um, talking to the community about how we're going to progress this. What I would say on a personal point of view is that I'm totally for this. Um, it provides social and affordable housing that we have very little space for. And of course, in going on to the next item, the brand new youth club, which of course we've got nothing in Hazemar at all, except a very rundown old Surrey building. So thank you for letting me say that. So I now ask my fourth question, which is when will community consultation and public information start and can this actually influence the plans that you're going forward with? I'll just say quickly one thing on that. One of the, one of the things that um, is always fun, and you'll know this as councillor of long standing, is that if you put too much on the table, then the public assume that you've already made the decision. But if you don't give enough to consult on, then you obviously aren't giving any kind of idea for the public to make any reasonable determination on whatsoever. So we're trying to make sure that we do hit a good balance on that. Um, before I hand over to Mark, I will also just say that every um, almost almost every Waverley member is a is a double or triple hatter, um, and the the four main settlements in Waverley have all, in their own way, made a real strive to try and expand youth services that have been cut to nothing by a combination of government policy and Surrey County Council. We've all taken up the baton, whether it be Godalming, Hazelmere, Farnham, or Cranley, to try and redress that. And I think it's um, a, an ambition, certainly, of mine to assist Hazelmere in making sure that it can do the same with its youth spaces. Um, and this project should really enable us to do that and help you do, and help you guys do that in Hazelmere. Mark. 
Um, thank you, Paul. Uh, I, I think, uh, John, um, th th the, first, the first thing to say is that we are starting from a different point than um, some other projects may, we, may deal with. Um, we are being informed by a local plan process that took six years, which was very heavily and thoroughly um, consulted on. So we're not flailing around in thin air here. We have a very clear compass. Uh, well, more than that, we have a very clear roadmap uh, on what we need to achieve. Um, and uh, that is um, not a bad starting point when you're sending out someone um, with their marching orders to go and do some work. But having said that, I think, as I said, um, the next phase is to come up with flesh on those bones uh, that we can go out and consult on. And in fact, we even have new tools. We have commonplace uh, and other tools on which we can do that. Uh, and we will all be uh, engaged on that. Um, what, what I would say, as I think I said in, in my remarks, is that there will be a lot of um, creative tension um, over this period uh, because there will be um, uh, uh, residents with different views about what we should be doing and how we should be going about it. Um, I would um, uh, gently uh, ask them uh, to wait until um, the uh, designs and the proposals actually come out um, and um, engage with us constructively on this. Um, because it's not only um, people's homes here that are at stake. It's not only a community hub here that it's at, that's at stake for Hazelmere. Uh, this is an important project for Hazelmere, but it's in a, also an important project for Waverley because it goes to the heart of the credibility of our local plan. And if we at Waverley cannot deliver on an allocated site in our own local plan, uh, it's very hard for us to argue that others should. As well as creative tension, I think we also need to watch out for created tension by those who would wish to throw spanners and rocks for their own political or other gain. Um, and so my request to all Hazelmere members is that, that we work together in ensuring that the public have accurate information to comment on at all times, and that this is an open and genuine consultation as possible, and that we all try and resist those who would seek to introduce misinformation into the equation, which is what we've seen, unfortunately, elsewhere. Um, John, did you have any other further questions before I move to Terry? No, the other thing I would ask is, please, that as we move along, this is going to be a very long road, I understand that. Can we make sure, please, that we've got good liaison and communication with both Hazelmere Town Council and all our members, please, including the town councillors? I will personally ensure it, John. Right, Councillor Weldon, um, you are also registered to speak, and if you have any questions, please do, um, you have the floor. Terry, I've just sent you a message just to check if you're all there. Um, if not, I will open it up to other Hazelmere members um, from elsewhere, um, and I'll come back to you in a moment. But if you are there, you now have the floor. Okay, I'm going to ask um, Councillor Mathis and Councillor Bayliss, do you have any comments or questions that you'd like to raise on behalf of the community in Hazelmere? Hello. Hi, Claire. Any questions? Hi, hi. Uh, well, yes, kind of. Actually, um, John was um, right on the button in his uh, last question, question number four, about community consultation. So so thank you, John, for that. Um, yeah, first of all, I would really like to say that I'm a big fan of something being done there. So I'm really supportive of this. It's probably one of the most exciting projects for Hazelmere. I've lived here for over 20 years. So my starting point is that, that I think this is a really, really great opportunity for Hazelmere. Um, so I will just say that the main things I've been reached out to about are, are as John said, about the um, community consultation to, um, oh, start my video, to, um, I think probably one of the comments I had summarised a lot of the other comments, and that is that um, 
the community generally, the people I've heard from anyway, or seen on Facebook as well, they kind of feel that um, this project is being done at them rather than being done with them. Um, I guess every time something like this comes up, people, it does create a lot of emotion and creative tension. So I suppose what I'm asking about is I do acknowledge and welcome that there's going to be um, community consultation, but will that be meaningful? I mean, will people actually be able to influence, obviously, small changes because Waverley have to do the serious proper work and the due diligence, but will the community actually be able to have a meaningful impact and how will that be achieved? Sorry, that's a very broad question, isn't it? So Claire, we're, what we're trying to do is um, start the consultation early. I mean, obviously there is a bit of a balance that has to be struck between how much we we put up straight away as a kind of straw man or staff for 10 and, and get comments back and, and how much we have to um, we have to put something up based on the constraints of the site and the viability of it and delivering something that actually works in the space um, and meets all of the other multitude of requirements that we have. Um, residents, of course, um, aren't going to be as aware of those constraints and, and those issues um, as certainly as, as some members and councillors in general will be. And so one of the things I think we also have a duty to do is explain where we are constrained in certain ways is to make it clear why that is um, and, and what we're going to try and, and, and do and work within. So we're, we're going to try and engage as meaningfully as possible, um, but it is always going to be a little difficult. And that's why I'm kind of making the sort of pre-warning to be on guard for misinformation, because it's a, as long as I think, I think the main commitment that we need to make is that we're, we're engaging as openly and transparently as possible right from the beginning um, on, as, on as much of the facts as possible. And if we at least start with that as the base, um, we should be engaging meaningfully. Mark. Yeah, and, and hello, Claire. Uh, I think the, um, uh, at the risk of repeating myself, um, you know, there's been six years worth of engagement on local plan part two, and then years worth of engagement on local plan part one before it. So, so you know, this isn't, this, this proposal, the proposal to do something on this site uh, for a mixed use development should not be coming as a surprise to anybody. And so we, we are simply delivering uh, on commitments that have been made in the local plan in, the, in our corporate strategy. Um, the good news is that we are a council and we are a responsible developer uh, and we are going to be going about this, uh, I, I hope, um, in a way uh, that we would uh, like to see others uh, go about this thing. There will be um, consultation, there will be engagement and there will be creative tension going both ways. Um, and um, it, it would be um, just wrong of me to pretend that everybody is going to get everything that they want. There are going to have to be compromises uh, in both directions, and I'm quite sure we're going to be criticised, whatever we do, for not listening to people who don't get 100% of what they want. Um, what I can guarantee um, is that uh, any constructive engagement, and I stress the word constructive, will be taken seriously uh, and we will do what we can uh, either to uh, take it on board or explain why we can't thank you any other questions claire i did have one um it wasn't actually related to that it was something i picked up when i was looking through my documents and it relates to things that i've been in involved with before so 50 long stay car parking spaces moving to the station. Is that right? Did I read that correctly? Potentially. Uh, yeah, potentially. The, 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 and that goes to the heart of the problem. Um, uh, half of the fairground car park, we believe, uh, is being used by uh, commuters uh, who see it as a freebie. Uh, and we, uh, anecdotally, um, you know, we, we have reason to believe that they may not even be Surrey residents, let alone Waverley or Hazelmere residents, they come in and they drive. So, so in terms of displacement, um, we would um, we think it's fair uh, to ask um, those uh, parkers uh, to use the spaces that are intended for them, uh, and to the extent that we have spaces up at the fairground, uh, they should be for um, Hazelmere residents and shoppers. Uh, and hopefully the residents of the new 
um, uh, of the new homes. Uh, but it is an explicit commitment in the local plan uh, that the local plan part two that we will uh, study and come up with uh, a solution uh, that is the best that we can do on car parking. OK, thank you. Can I just ask one quick follow up, which was yep. really where I was going with that. Is that going to look like another tier on the car park on the multi-storey? just so I can visually conceptualise what those 50 places at the station. Well, look, as, 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 as I said earlier on, we, you know, we do not um, control uh, how anybody uh, outside, outside of our powers can deal with, with this sort of stuff. Um, so the, uh, you know, whether or not there's another tier uh, needed uh, on the station car park, I'm afraid, you know, is, is not something I can comment on. And, and, and even if, uh, even if, the space is needed. You know, I can't speak for um, the, uh, the railway company and what they will do about it. You know, we will do what we can, uh, but the status quo is not an option. Uh, we have a commitment in the local plan part two, uh, which goes to the credibility of our whole local plan. We have a commitment in our corporate strategy, a mandate which was reinforced uh, less than a year ago. We have to do something uh, and we will minimise the harms and we'll maximise the benefits. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Um, Terry, are you with us now? John, did, did you manage to get hold of Terry? I, I've spoken to uh, Councillor Weldon. Unfortunately, he can't unmute. He, he's, he can hear what's going on, but he can't actually contact us. I have got his question, um, but it's to do really with item agenda 11. Do you want me to ask it now? Um, so, we'll, uh, yes, please, if you do item 11 now, then I'll bring in Alistair and we'll try and, and then we'll come back to exec, the rest of exec for comments. So, yes, if you can ask um, Terry's other question on way down. Yeah. Okay, well, very quickly, what it is, the, there's been a large debate, as we all know, about the potential users of the new youth hub. And one of those has been the scouts. Terry's concerned. He wants to know if there's been any answers or liaison to say whether the scouts will be given use of that or whether, in fact, they have other premises or other areas that they want to go. Um, I have been involved in some of those talks, so I know some of the problems. Yes, that's been a long-standing question, hasn't it, Mark? Yeah, uh, if, uh, yeah, we've had lots of discussions with the Scouts about um, whether they want to stay, whether they want to go somewhere else. Um, and um, uh, and um, if the Scouts um, would like to be considered as a tenant for the new community hub, um, you know, I'm sure they'd be very, very welcome. We have not closed any discussions with the Scouts about what they do or don't want to do uh, with their existing or future premises. And then finally, Alistair, Councillor Bayliss, if you've got any questions. Um, hi, yes, thank you. Um, I've, I fully appreciate um, what's been said and the difficult balance you've you've got to manage at, at this point. Um, I do support a mixed use development on the site um, and agree with the, the Waverley LPP2. Um, I think the from my point of view, what, what initially raised my concern is it, is it comes across as quite um, specific in the in the documents. It says thirty two apartments. There's the word supermarket keeps getting mentioned and the the youth hub is going to be moved. That all seems quite um, specific because a, a retail element or a mixed use development could be so, so many things. And so when the, the documentation says these quite specific things, that, that raises alarm bells amongst people, particularly, I mean, it was mentioned about traffic on way hill i mean tesco's creates lots of traffic if there was a, a supermarket of similar size and the number of 32 flats suggest that it would be a large retail element um that could have huge impact and i think just putting those specifics out there raises uh, alarms um that things have been decided and so i'm just really concerned that the community does get involved as, as early as possible with those broad aspirations um, for the site. So, um, yeah, I'm just keen to know when the first uh, the community gets to be involved with the broad aspirations for the site, which I think needs to be quite early on. Mark. Thank you. Well, of course, the community has been involved in the development of local plan part two. 
uh, and that has to be our starting point, uh, and that will be our starting point. Um, as I said um, in my remarks, um, we have um, uh, uh, worked through um, all sorts of permutations of mixed use, and the five options that are in the paper are the five that survived uh, that filter, both in terms of delivering the outcomes that are specified in local plan and also in our corporate strategy, but also have survived financial liability. So uh, the density uh, of the uh, residential, for example, uh, 32 homes versus 22 in the local plan is a, is a factor of the viability. It's unlikely planning-wise um, and quality-wise uh, that we would want to go uh, above 32. We might still have to when the numbers come through uh, to get the um, to get the financial numbers to work, and likewise, um, it's unlikely that we could go below much below 32, simply because the thing will become uh, less viable. So you know, it's um, four, five, six-dimensional chess. Likewise, with the um, with the retail uh, element, uh, we didn't uh, pull that out of thin air. We've had discussions with our professional advisors as to the kind of tenant. Uh, that uh, would be interested um, in the um, type of retail space or the type of mixed-use space that we would be able to deliver uh, on this site. Uh, and the indications are, and again, nothing's been decided, but the indications are that it's likely to be a retailer uh, of some sort. Uh, and so we are um, going in that um uh, we're, we're going in that direction, but um, we are now getting to the point where we are uh, starting to, um, uh, uh, if you like, um, uh, uh, pre-consult on designs and plans that haven't actually come out of a proper process yet. And I want to be very cautious because the more we do that, the more we run what-if scenarios now, um, we fall into the trap that you've just described, uh, which is um, giving the thing an appearance of certainty that it does not deserve and should not have. I think the other reassurance I'll just give you, Alistair, as well, and I imagine it would also count for Claire and others in the room too, um, the, the, the overarching principles that we're effectively using here are those in our corporate strategy. Um, and these are things that the administration at Hazelmere Town Council ran on. Um, they are things that every member um, of the alliance parties here, including your own, um, supported to run for office and re-election at Waverley. So these are principles that I think and hope are compatible um, and are those that the community have supported both through local plan and through the election. Um, the, the element that I think we're just to repeat something I said earlier, where there are constraints and where we do have to manage expectations in the community, it's my hope that we'll do a good job in explaining why those constraints exist, because some of them are going to be fairly immutable. I mean, they're not being infinite money, infinite time and infinite resource to do, do a thing. Um, there will be there will naturally be constraints. And, and I think we have a duty to make sure that people um, have a good chance of understanding what they are. Mark. Yeah, and, I, and I'm sorry to have to say this, uh, but our corporate strategy uh, is that we will be financially sustainable. Uh, and um, the um, whatever's, whatever's developed on this site will have to pay for itself. Um, we're not a private developer, um, so um, it, we, we're not talking about the timescales that a mm -hmm. private developer uh, might uh, talk about. Um, but they will have to pay for themselves, and that, and that is uh, an important constraint. Indeed, as much as financial financial value is not the only value, it is not a value we can ignore either. So, right, um, members of the executive, any comments that you would like to add, Liz? Thank you, thank you, Legion. Thank you, Mark. I mean, you know, Mark has outlined the um, the amount of consultation that has already taken place to get this site into local plan part two. Um, so whilst I appreciate that some people, it was you know quite a long time ago that the local plan um, part two started its journey through this council, and um, so so people may have forgotten that it was a, it's a strategic site within the plan, but it has gone through consultation and obviously uh, full examination as well. And um, you know I can't stress how important it is that we deliver this site as part of the allocation for Hazelmere. 
under Local Plan Part 2. And uh, as Councillor Murray mentioned earlier, and you yourself, Leader, it's extremely important that we deliver more housing that is actually affordable. And it's only if we build this and retain it that we can um, influence that and, and that this will happen, basically. Um, but also, we need to help to deliver a thriving economy. We've just adopted, we just looked to go pushing forward the um, economic development strategy, um, moving it to full council. And so it's important that, that we do build um, a thriving economy and also that we generate income for this council. Um, and, you know, it's extremely important, as Mark has pointed out, that within the local plan, that we deliver our own sites. Um, despite the fact that we've got 5,500 outstanding planning permissions yet to be implemented, we still don't have a five-year housing land supply. And strategic sites within our local plan will come up time and time again at appeal and be scrutinised if they're not being delivered. We have very few levers to pull for delivering housing ourselves, and this site provides, you know, one of those opportunities, one of those rare opportunities. Um, I would also point out that, that during the examination process for the local plan part two, Surrey County Council would have looked at this site as part of the spatial strategy and would have considered a mixed-use development, housing and uh, retail or, um, opportunities and, and the parking as well on the site. But if there's any specific improvements that they consider as part of a, you know, if it, this moves forward at some stage to planning permission, then obviously they will look at those specific requirements uh, and, and discuss those with, with Waverley. I mean, there, there is going to be a loss of commuter parking on the site. That is inevitable. Um, but as, as mentioned early, earlier, there will be a full parking assessment um, to find out, uh, to establish the usage of the site and, and the need moving forward. You know, we, we, we don't have the luxury of a carrot or a stick to get develop, developers to build the housing that we need across the borough. And, you know, with the current 84% uplift in our housing need numbers um, based on the government's affordability ratio, this, we all know this acts as a perverse incentive for developers to, to hold back housing. Um, and in the result of that is that, that housing prices increase even further. So resulting in higher profits and resulting in higher numbers of planning permissions that we have to deliver as local authorities. But perversely, again, we are tested on the number of houses built by the government not by the number of houses that we provide planning permission for. The former is totally out of our control. The latter is within our control, but um, we're not tested on that, which is, uh, you know, one of the considerable, considerably flawed aspects of our housing allocation. You know, this site helps to deliver Hazelmere's allocation within the local plan. It is also has the benefit of being a brownfield site. Um, and, um, you know, it, it will deliver some really much needed, as we've been talking about, needed for the economy, um, affordable housing for people. But also with that, with the with the um, commercial aspect, the, the retail aspect as well, that could provide people with also employment almost on their doorstep. It's near to local schools. It's near to transport links. You know, it is a very good location for for new homes. And whether we like it or not, again, as Mark has mentioned, you know, it needs to be viable. You know, if we are going to be able to deliver that affordable housing, um, you know, the, the the site itself has to pay for itself and that needs to be viable with a viable uh, commercial offering within that um, site. So, you know, at the moment we've got the 32 homes, whether or not that changes, you know, we're only at this stage looking for a development partnership, you know, so that number may change, you know, and, and, and we're looking at 70% of market rates for rent for the two, two, one and two bedroom homes and 65% for three bedroom homes. And that's, that's a, you know, a really far more affordable rental rate than other um, uh, available properties in, in Hazelmere. And this is only the start of the start. Uh, and we've been talking about, you know, are we going to consult? Well, of course, you know, we will consult. We'll, we'll brief with Hazelmere Town Council, we'll, we'll brief with the local members. As part of the planning permission, we will have a, a session where we, we present what we're proposing to, to the community, just as you would do on any major development. And then from that, go forward to the, you know, obviously the, the full planning permission. But that is way down the line, way down the line at present. 
Um, you know, this is as well, you know, let's not lose sight of the fact this is an exciting opportunity for Hazelmere to get a new community hub, a brand new community hub, which can host a com loads of community groups, whatever, you know, whether that's youth opportunities, whether or not it is the Scouts, um, you know, that's within, you know, within their decision making. Um, but it is a really great opportunity. And um, I don't think we should lose sight of that of that community hub and delivering that for Hazelmere and, and also of that uh, affordable housing element as well. So um, I hope that we, you know, that we can obviously move this project forward and, and work, um, you know, with, with our partner, our development partner to, to produce something that's, you know, really um, important and, and, uh, and welcomed within Hazelmere. Thank you, Liz. And one thing I'm, I would say is that I, I would hope all the Hazelmere members in particular um, reach out to their community to to try and get residents to avail themselves of the opportunities to engage that we're going to create here because there is also an onus on people to to get involved in these processes and not just to wait around till the end and then say no i don't like this it's it, we're going to try and give everybody as much opportunity to get involved from the ground floor here um so it's, it's pushing out as much as possible we also know that left to its own devices the housing development market in hazelmere when it actually builds houses at all tends to produce four or five bedroom houses in protected landscapes beyond the boundaries of the town or in areas that are otherwise inappropriate. So we do, I think, have an onus to try and build some genuinely affordable and sustainable housing in the right place, um, particularly on land that we own ourselves and can and can control how that works. All right, I've got Paul and then Janet, and then I'll try and bring this to a conclusion, I think. Thank you, Leader. Uh, what, what an interesting executive meeting we have tonight. That doesn't say that they aren't always thrilling, but, uh, but, but tonight. So we have, as Liz said, a development at the start of the start. Uh, <laughs> item 12 on our agenda is towards the end. Uh, not quite the end, but in Oxford Ridge, we have an example of what this administration and its previous administration has done. Hazelmere, hold the faith. It will work. It will be delivered to maximum benefit for Hazelmere residents. We can prove it because we did it at uh, Oxford Ridge and we're still doing it. And it is certainly my hope that the sort of housing that we, we deliver on this site is, is analogous to what we're trying to do at Site C, in um, particularly at Oxford Ridge, where they are as sustainable housing as possible. Janet. Thank you, Leader. Well, I, obviously, I've come to this at a very late stage, but I just wanted to support everything that's been said and all the hard work that's been done to get it to this point. I think it's incredibly exciting, this prospect of 32-ish affordable new homes retained and influenced by Waverley, according to our principles, and uh, allowing ongoing opportunities for engagement and public consultation. I mean, I, I just don't know what's not to like here. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the next stage of this whole project. So at that point, I think we're marking the end of the beginning of the fairground project so that we can hopefully move forward to the start. Um, are there any final comments before I move to the recommendations on item 10? And does anybody want to speak to any more of the recommendations on item 11 before? Because I, I would like to take them together or one after the other. OK, so moving to your agenda packs, um, there is a revised set of recommendations, one through six, which are for the executive to approve on item 10. And, item, and a further seventh recommendation, recommendation one, that is um, executive recommending to full council. Um, can I take the recommendations to executive as a block one through six? And can I have all those in favour, please show? Thank you. And the final one I'll read, the executive recommends full council approves a budget of £21,408,334 for the capital works. My apologies, have I misspoke on that number? Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yep. I'll restart that. That the executive recommends full council approves a budget estimate of twenty one million four hundred eight thousand three hundred thirty four pounds for the capital works to complete the project, including allocation of two hundred eighty thousand four hundred ten pounds for the procurement of the required services for the next stage of the project. Can I have all those in favour to recommend to council? Thank you all. Bear with me while I just get the revised item 11 items. 
And then there are five items for the executive to approve under item 11, which I'd also like to take as a block. Can I have all those in favor, please show. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much also to officers for joining on this one, for the Hazelmere members, both on in the room and on the Zoom, for, for joining us tonight and taking part. Um, I will be speaking to the comms team in the morning about turning everything that's been said in these two agenda items into initial set of FAQs, which will, of course, be shared with the public, the town council and local members for additional comments, at which point we'll get into the communications plan um, for the project, uh, which you'll have full involvement on as well. Right. At that point, I will now move to item 12, Dispose of Assets Oxford Ridge, which is with Councillor Paul Rivers. Thank you, Leader. Well, I think we can keep it very short. Um, although I do ooze with pride every time that Oxford Ridge is, uh, is mentioned. I, it is, I am staggered by the work that Waverley and its officers have, has done for an area that is desperately in need of, of uh, support over, over many years. It was always considered to be another area in Godalming, you know, a poor area. Boy, has it changed now. So, well, similar to the one before, 30 new affordable homes have been built and 28 mm -hmm. will be for rent, and two for shared ownership. And it's the two shared ownership ones that we uh, have brought forward here. Uh, Louisa has found people who are really willing to move in. Um, you know, amazing. Uh, not amazing at all. Who wouldn't in these wonderfully built uh, houses in, in, in a perfect part of the world? Lovely views from there. Um, I can't say anything more. It's strategically pleasing that we are delivering for our residents. So, Hazelmere, I look forward to it too. So, Leader, I'm going to leave it there. I, I am just, just do it, Executive. Just say yes. Surprising how often that works. Um, as I'm also one of the members for Oxford Ridge, I'd just like to add that, I mean, this is. I'm not a huge fan of the model of shared ownership as a concept, and I know I'm probably not the only person in this room that has that concern. It is, however, the model that exists, and it is one of the ways that we actually make projects like this work. Um, and so this is an area where, um, you know, I, I, I park a certain idealistic opposition to shared ownership as a concept and remember that we've delivered an immense quantity of exceptional quality housing as a result of being able to do things like this. Um, so I'll start with Victoria as my fellow ward member in this case, and then Liz. Thank you, Leader. Um, regardless of opinions around shared ownership, which I um, I share with you, I very much welcome the progress that has been made within our ward in Oxford Ridge. We have very much prioritised as, as an administration the development of high quality housing in this area, and I'm really pleased to see this paper has come forward. Thank you. Liz and then Mark. Thank you. I mean, I'm... Remember when Oxford Bridge, when you know we were looking at the the sites many many years ago, and went up there for a visit and discussed with Louisa all about you know how the the difficulties in moving tenants and 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 you know how to get that. It was a really complex project, and and I must admit the officers handled it so well, and Louisa has worked particularly so hard on this project, and um, I'd like to thank her for that. But also, I'm just so proud of this project. You know, from a point of view, when I look at our agenda and I look at this project. Project, and I look at the fairground project and I look at 69 High Street and I look at the Cranny Leisure Centre. I mean, this executive is so busy and delivering so much for, for residents. And, um, you know, if we can also deliver more affordable housing, um, despite, yes, my reservations as well on, on shared ownership model, but, you know, that, that has got to be commended. And, um, you know, I know it's busy. I know how much, how much, how hard this executive works and our officers as well. But I hope alongside that, there's a lot of pride in what we're actually achieving as well. Thank you. And I know Louise and Candice and others do what they can with the rules and laws that exist to maximise the things that I know we all care about here. Mark. Uh, thank you, Leader. Yeah, pride and um, a certain amount of envy, to be honest. I, I, I represent Farnham, which is currently uh, blighted by a private developer hole in the ground, bank slap in the middle of town. Um, so it is, it is with pride and envy uh, that um, I... 
um, read this report, uh, pride in what we can deliver, pride in what we are delivering uh, against um, some pretty heavy odds and a great deal of criticism. Um, we are um, walking the walk, and I'm really, really, really proud of that. I think I'd, I'd have to correct one thing now. I, I'm sure Barclay Homes have turned it from a, a, a slope into a hole. So they've definitely done something over the last five years, for sure, um, at the Wallmead, which is what I assume you're referring to. Any other comments before I bring it to the recommendation? In which case, then, I, the recommendations are in the agenda, items 2.1 and 2.2, um, regarding, one, the executive yeah. approved the sale of two shared ownership homes at Oxford Ridge, Godalming, Site C, on the terms that are an exempt Annex 1, and to delegate to the executive head of legal and democratic services authority to approve, sign, and seal the final form of the agreements. And 2.2, executive approved delegated authority for the head of housing services in consultation with the portfolio holders for housing delivery and the housing portfolio operations to approve the future sale of the percentage shares in the properties referred to in exempt Annex 1 up to and including 100% tenant ownership. All those in favour, can you please show? Thank you very much indeed. Right, then item 13, the extension of the antisocial behaviour public spaces protection order and in lieu of the absent Councillor Miralee's Councillor Fairclough is going to do his best impression. Uh, uh, <laughs> indeed, leader, indeed, leader, I am. And I must, first of all, for the second time this evening, issue my apologies for uh, this time for any of you who have tuned in, hoping to hear the dulcet and refined tones of Councillor Miralee's. I'm afraid that tonight it's very much her understudy who will be reading her script, and uh, I can only hope I do it some justice. The recommendation for the extension of this PSPO for a further three years is an essential element in ensuring the safety and well-being of our residents. It has been effective in addressing antisocial behaviour issues in the Farncombe and Godalming area since 2021, and equally effective in the prevention of bonfires and authorised barbecues being lit at highly sensitive green spaces across the borough. The work that has gone into deciding its efficiency by engaging, sorry, efficacy, I apologise, you see, I'm no keeker, uh, by engaging with partners, stakeholders, and the wider community across the board has taken place and the outcome has shown to be a popular one for the PSPO's continuation. The communication with all parties will continue as they, abs as they are absolutely essential for the PSPO to be effective. Meanwhile, we will continue to work with those parishes and councils where problems are occurring outside the designated areas of the PSPO and ask people to report the issues to the police so that this council can get a better idea of the hotspots that do need further attention. I commend this to the executive. So a couple of things on this one I, I feel compelled to say first. First of all, can I thank David Hollingsworth, who's on the Zoom, um, for all of his work in this. Yes. It has been invaluable in making sure that this is done correctly and with good advice and proper engagement. And it's been handled incredibly professionally in a number of ways. It's been quite difficult and it's been very good to have that level of very sensible, sound advice in the background. Um, the other thing I would say is that PSPOs on their own, particularly on antisocial behaviour, are meaningless without providing the other side of the equation. If PSPOs are the stick, then frankly, Godalming's carrot in this case is our youth service. And I would certainly not be in at any point recommending PSPOs on antisocial behaviour without the other end of that equation being dealt with in those communities. It is why when it comes to supporting potential extension at another point to Whitley and Milford, the only reason that I'm content to do that is because they are also exploring a reasonable um, expansion of their own youth offering in their territory. Um, what I am a little bit concerned about, though, um, in a few there is a few other areas when it comes to the enforcement of those PSPOs, uh, the capacity of the police to actually enforce it is something that I have. Well, I will be taking to the new police and crime commissioner when they're elected on May the 2nd. It's probably the first act of business that I'll put in there mailbox if I can. Um, and the second is, again, to make the point that the fines that we're able to issue on things like bonfires and barbecues are grossly insufficient to act as a deterrent. 
and the government insists that it is looking at it, but I suspect that will never materialise before the elections. Um, I do think the fine level should be so extreme as to deter people from doing it in the first place, or certainly make them make sure they think twice about doing it ever again if they're caught. We've had too many heath fires um, and other bomb fires and other other problems that um, that we could, I think, handle better if we were able to levy larger fines, but we aren't able to at present. Um, Victoria. Thank you very much. Um, I would just like to wholeheartedly um, support all that you've just said. I think it's um, imperative that the youth service, um, which is being run by um, the Godalming Town Council, is given um, full support and that it can extend its reach outside of the kind of Broadwater area where it's operating at the moment. I'd love to see more um, outreach within the um, Arons Hill Oxford Ridge area. So thank you. So there is a separate PSPO that covers the section of our ward. Um, I'll bring in Janet now, who's obviously the, the ward member uh, for Farncombe and Catchall. I will also just thank your, your predecessor, um, George Wilson, and obviously Penny Rivers, of course, who still serves in that capacity, because it is because of partly because of the two previous ward members in, in the area that this was something that was brought to a head um, and dealt with in the first place. So, Janet. Yes, thank you. Um, well, I thank them too, and David Hollingsworth as well for this excellent report. And uh, obviously, I support it. I just want to re-emphasise that when it comes to PSPOs, it's really essential the, to underpin the importance of, the importance of partnership working um, and the use of attendant and other legislation and practices. These things should not be standing alone. They are absolutely dependent upon other partnership working. And I mean, years ago, the police used to get really irritated with everybody just sort of getting sloppy shouldered about all this stuff and dumping it on them. Um, and, and that's not what they were set up to, to, to do. Without using too many cliches, I'd consider this a tool in the box. Yes. Um, and the other thing I would also add is that as every, every element that would normally have contributed some kind of resource to this equation, as they are now also diminished, they will only achieve anything at all by some level of partnership working in the current police capacity we've got our in ability to enforce and and you know the, the the relatively diminished capacity of youth and other support services in the area so they have to work together otherwise all of this is meaningless any further comments otherwise i shall bring it to, sorry liz yeah thank you thank you leader i just wanted to echo your your thanks to david hollingsworth as well you know he's he's um is, is a fantastic resource and and um i know that earlier on in our, um when we were talking about the ons recommendations they they spoke something about the resourcing properly the community officers or something but i think we have got this david which is a fantastic resource and is helping me with some antisocial behavior um issues within cranley and um I think that you know, with the, with the youth work, as you mentioned, um, I have secured on Monday evenings the the mobile youth bus to come to Cranley, and um, yes, you're one. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it's coming to Cranley on Monday, uh, starting after Easter. So um, we've got a place for it. It will be parked outside the um, Cranley Parish Council offices. And um, I'll be trying to um, signpost the young people to there. But on a more serious note, you know, there is such a lack of um, youth offering provided anymore. And, um, and it's only really by the efforts of obviously Godwing Town Council that, you know, that has started off this sort of youth movement and, and hopefully that will grow and will establish itself in other areas. And I think, you know, the young people very much will appreciate that. And, you know, I went and visited the, the youth hub at, at um, Broadwater there and I, it is fabulous. I wanted to stay and do the crafting on the table, you know, but, um, you know, it really is fantastic resource. There's places for, for for young people just to sit and chat, play games, you to get it, you know, gaming. Um, also, you know, to do loads of craft things. And the people there are so committed, and and you know, a great team of people um, run by Tom. And uh, you know, I just can't thank them enough for for coming to Cranley. And as I said, would love to um, expand it out further. Thank you. I would certainly encourage any town and parish looking to have t dip their toe into youth services to, to make an appointment with Godalming Town Council's youth service officer. Um, and also, um, as I was trying to shill the virtues of this to various members of Farnham Town Council earlier today, um, your hinterland around your town centre area is large enough that having some kind of mobile youth offering like we like we have for the surrounding areas in Godalming is, is something I, I would... 
I would suggest you uh, maybe try and borrow for a few days as well, just to see how that works, because um, certainly South Farnham and, and uh, North Farnham particularly would probably benefit from that kind of um, offering. Did I see any other speakers there? Did I miss anybody? No, in which case, I'll bring it to the recommendation, which is 2.1, that the executive notes this report and provides comments on the extension of the PSPO in the light of the evaluation and consultation and conclusions. I have all those in favour, please show. Thank you very much indeed. Um, to note, item 15, Hazelmere Leisure Centre lease um, has been removed, uh, has been withdrawn at present. I believe it will come to the executive in May. And at that point, we now have finished our business at 1959.